Okay. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Don't pay the ransom. Don't do it. Don't pay the ransom. They're lying to you. Oh my goodness. Sorry, folks. I have been scrambling here. Here. I'm here. Don't pay the ransom. See, don't I told you. I told you. I told you. Don't do it. Oh, let me stop that. Oh my gosh. Sorry, folks, for being so late here. I have been scrambling to get a video up on the crash of the Epic in the uh, port in San Juan, and I'm this close, but I, I need more time, so I figured I'll do the show first, and I'll get it on afterwards. My God, it's crazy. Uh, sorry about that, people. I'm just, uh, that's right, Sylvan, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I see that. Oh, my goodness. I'm ready for trivia. I'm all ready to roll. Uh, I've just... Um, I was just scrambling here to uh, to get the uh, get this video up. I had to get uh, I had to get permission from the uh, the uh, holder of the video. There's a fellow who videotaped, uh, videotaped, you know, recorded the event. And uh, I don't want to be in violation of any rules with YouTube, so I sought and received permission to use his clip. And so I was editing this whole thing the last while, and I totally for just lost track of time because I'm so into this whole thing. Got all my voicing done and background music in there. And I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to upload, but I can't do that right now because I got to do this show. And I'm looking at my watch, but what time is it? Oh my goodness! I'm six minutes late. What am I doing? So here I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jennifer's not here to keep me in line. That's right. That's exactly right. I'm snowed in. Creston here. There's a foot of snow out here, still coming down. I can't get out of town. Uh, so I'll be here a couple more days before I get up. Anyway, welcome one, welcome all. Sorry about the delay, uh, and uh, just it's just kooky. It's just kooky. Uh, what can I say? Uh, welcome one, welcome all. Uh, if you've uh, never been, if you've never been here before, is it always like this? Well, not really, but you know there are times. Uh, I, I I could be better, uh, but I'm working on it. Um, what we're doing here is we are uh, we're going to have some fun with some trivia tonight. Uh, just one minute, I have to get a plug. Sorry, uh, I need some power. Uh, trying to stay on top of this whole thing oh my goodness can't can't do the show without the uh the big ass ipad juiced up you know and uh gotta keep the ipad rolling and there she is that'll guarantee that make sure my phone's okay and everything else anyway <laughs> welcome one welcome all let's see who's here and let's get on with it uh, wendy thompson is here love the speedo show uh, too bad about the San Juan Pier. Nurse Nancy, what happened to the Pier San Juan? I'm out of the loop uh, trying to catch up on all the vlogs. Not enough time. Linda Lou, hi, Wendy. Hi, Nurse Nancy. Linda Lou, I missed the earlier show. Wendy Thompson. Uh, hi, uh, Nina. Uh, Linda, um, Nurse Nancy. Uh, Wendy Thompson, a uh, ship ran into the Pier. Nurse Nancy, oh, no. Wendy, hope they can get it fixed a few somewhere there. Uh, Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, uh, De 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 Deb. Buffalo Deb. I guess that's what that is. Hoping to hear some news about NCL Epic supposed to cruise this weekend. Um, it's in San Juan now. It's fine. It's there. Uh, I was talking to a passenger who's on board the ship. They've been allowed to leave the ship uh, tonight if they want. Uh, they can come and go. And they're uh, leaving tomorrow afternoon at 5 in the afternoon is the scheduled departure time of the ship from San Juan. Um, now, the question is, um, what will the... Uh, will the engines be repairable in that amount of time? Uh, they, they they seem to think so because they're saying, uh, you know, we're out of here tomorrow at 5. So they figure they'll have it done. Now, of course, uh, they have to inspect the damage to the ship <laughs> from the pier because they kind of scraped in there a little bit. Um, so they're, they're doing that as we speak. Uh, don't worry about that. The insurance company will be... Uh, Oh, the, the adjusters will be out for the insurance company to look at the pier, and they'll work that one out. Don't worry about that. How long it'll take to repair the pier, nobody knows. That one is a, That is another matter. Can the pier be used by other ships in the meantime? Don't know. A uh, lot of questions to be answered going forward. But if the, if the engine repair is uh, done on time, and if the scraping of the ship isn't too bad, the ship will leave tomorrow at 5 and head out to sea. Uh, will then be the next day at, uh, at Coke, uh, Great Stirrup Key, which is the only stop it'll make that it was supposed to make, uh, other than San Juan for this repair, and then one day at sea and back to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, that is the, apparently the deal. We'll have to see what happens. Passengers have not been offered any compensation in cash or any kind of a credit against their accounts. The only thing they've been offered is a 50% discount on a future cruise based on what they paid on this cruise. So 
you paid a thousand bucks a person for your balcony, you're getting a $500 credit against a future cruise with Norwegian, but you're not getting any discount on this one. You're not getting any refund on this one. You're not getting any cabin credit at this point. Nada. Uh, that seems to be Norwegian's line at the moment. Now, if they can't leave port, there's the, the trick. If they cannot leave San Juan tomorrow because of other issues or the, the the engine issues haven't been resolved, then things could change. Uh, that Then they're going to have to decide, well, how much longer will we need? Can we repair this ship here in San Juan? Or should we take her back to Port Canaveral or to Miami or somewhere else for an engine repair if it's an emergency repair? This is all up in the air. Uh, what will they do with the passengers? Still don't know. If they can do a 24 hour, an additional 24 hour repair, they'll probably just keep them on board. But if they need uh, four or five days, uh, they may then have to make arrangements to fly them home. When? I don't know. How? And all that. Nobody wants to go there. Anyway, the, the easiest repair, the easiest thing to do is get it repaired, get the engines back online, and get that ship back to home port um, on time or the day before even. And if they did that, they would certainly give the passengers a portion of their fare back because it isn't a seven-day cruise. It might only be a six-day cruise. We will wait and see this all out. I'll keep following it, and I'll keep updating it. Uh, the video you'll see tonight after the show, I will get it posted tonight. Uh, it's just the update and the crash itself into the harbor and, um, and uh, what you've just heard me talk about. So anyway, there you go. What else can I say? Who else is here? Let me talk uh, to who else is here. Um, Linda Lou, I missed the earlier show. Uh, let's see here. Um, um, Brittany Lockwood is here. Hi, Brittany. Brittany, uh, uh, another Brittany is here. Brittany Wilder. Wow. Uh, welcome to Brittany. Sorry, I'm just praying about the encore. Uh, just praying about the encore. Uh, the Epic. Linda Lou, poor people on the Epic. They, the, the, they, the problem can't wait to get off that ship. Uh, the cruise from hell just got worse. Uh, Brittany Wilder. Hey, Brucey, 60 here in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The gas is still, uh, at 202. No advertisements today. Right on, Brittany. Brittany Walter, thank you. Linda Lou, oops, probably. Uh, Linda Lou, we have more snow coming here. Reno, Nevada, it's really windy out. Oh, my gosh, it's coming down there. Paul Wilson, hello, Bruce and everybody. Paul Wilson, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Alan Carter, hi, all from Calgary, 20, uh, 12 below Celsius. That is 12 better. It was 24 below Celsius yesterday. Now it's only 12 below. Still cold, but not really, really, really cold, but cold. Uh, Linda Lou, hi, Paul, and Alan Sylvan Forrest. Hi, Bruce, and all missed the 5 o'clock show trivia. Yay. I'll catch up on the epics woes later. Linda Lou, hi, Sylvan. I missed a two, but I'll, I'm ready for trivia now. Paul Wilson, hello, Reno Lady, Brittany Lockwood. My mom is joining in for trivia, but I'm the one doing the typing. John LeBeau, a hi, all from Raleigh, North Carolina. Wind just blew through. John, welcome from Raleigh. Nice to have you here. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining me for trivia. Linda Lou, hi, Brittany. Julie, Carly, hi, hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Waiting for the messed, uh, the messed up internet here to work. <laughs> Hang in there, Julie. Peter Ekma, hi, Bruce. Has your show stopped uh, Stopped yet? Has your show stopped yet? The other one stopped? Are you, uh, what's going on? Everyone's wondering now, why is Neon? Uh, cool Jazz, just wondering about the uh, the gun ga the gun granny. Um, if all had gone uh, had planned and her friend got the luggage in Miami, she'd be in possession of an illegal gun if the police had stopped her in Miami, right? Because you don't have a carry, the per you don't have a permit to carry in Miami. You have a permit to carry in Wisconsin, where she's from. Oh, yeah, cool, Jess. This is something. Paul, Paul Wilson, anyone from PA and Connecticut can give me road conditions. Ah, Paul would like to know. Sylvan Forrest, I have Lucy with me, but she is useless at trivia. Good thing we love her so much. <laughs> you mean the pet python can't help you answer questions? That's what kind of a snake is that? I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, Daily Trucking, I'm here. How you doing, buddy? I'm <clears throat> Brittany Lockwood. Hi, Linda Lou from Mum and I. Linda Lou, uh, laugh out large darn. No help from Lucy. Paul Wilson, hello, Daily Trucker. Where are you tonight? Cool jazz. Uh, Paul Wilson coming through New York, uh, to Connecticut. A little sleep right now. Uh, 95 North should be good, though. Uh, Paul Wilson, thanks, Cool Jazz. Sylvan Forrest, where is Bruce? Snowed in. That's right. Where was he? Where was he? Uh, Paul Wilson, yes, Bruce is in Yes, in Bruce's house. Laugh out loud. Linda Lou, yes, Bruce had about eight inches of snow. Eight inches of snow, Sylvan. Cool Jazz, uh, buddy, be safe. Tote your horn at exit 17 in Larchmont. Linda Lou, Bruce is late, laughing out loud. Paul Wilson, Cool Jazz, where is Larchmont? Cool Jazz, Bruce went to investigate the epic failure. Laugh out loud, Sylvan and Forrest. Now I get to see what you're talking about. I can see what you're saying about me when you're done. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Bruce went to investigate. Sylvan, eight inches of snow. It's a nice autumn day where I used to be in Montreal. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> eight inches in Montreal of snow. That's called a dusting. <laughs> That's all that is. That's just a little... Ah, just uh, we're just funning with you. We're just we're just playing with you guys. Eight inches, eight minches. That's nada. 
Sylvan, why is it silent? Did Bruce forget or is he sleeping? Paul Wilson, how much do you want to bet Bruce forgot what time it is? Cool Jazz, exit 17 on I-95 North coming out of New York City. Brittany, he could be having technical difficulties. Wendy Thompson, Jen, where is Bruce? Julie Carly, I have a feeling it's going to be a good trivia. I'm traveling with Bruce. I'm here. Stand by. <laughs> Linda, I should have waited another five minutes to see what you guys would have done. Linda Lou, Jennifer, not there to keep them online. Nurse Nancy, oh no, Bruce, oh no, where are you? Sylvia, I came in a decent time and his ass isn't here. His ass isn't here and I'm here. Sylvia, oh man, cool jazz. Bruce is putting on the speedos to surprise us. Linda Lou, laugh out loud, Bruce. We're standing by, Brittany. Let's all give Bruce a thumbs up. Linda Lou, speedos, speedos, speedos. Sylvia Swan, oh no, no speedos. I'll go blind. No, Linda. Wendy Thompson, CJ, we just don't need to know that. As Silva getting forget, he's getting forgetful. A sign of old age. One day he'll be on the air with his speedos on the outside of his pants. No disrespect intended. <laughs> Paul Wilson sounds good. Cool. Going on I two seventy eight to I ninety five from I seventy eight to New Jersey. I'm just glad to help I give out road directions for truckers out there. That's what I'm all about. Linda Lou impeach Trump ad just came on. Laugh out loud. Cool jazz. Paul Wilson, what time do you think? <laughs> You will get away. Where in Connecticut? Can I get a kit? Where in Connecticut are you going? Uh, Wendy Thompson, Leighton Law at J Julie Carley. Give your thumbs ups. Uh, Sheila Bossier, Isle. Paul Wilson, head for Boston, Massachusetts. Paul, uh, cool Jazz. Oh, you're passing through Connecticut. Laugh out loud. Sheila is laughing. Brittany, uh, never mind. Paul Wilson, cool Jazz. I got de delayed to do road conditions in PA. Lance Gillespie is here. Hey, everybody. Lance, how are you, buddy? Welcome to the craziness that is this show. Linda Lou, Bruce, you are great. We love you. Love you no matter what. Eric Gibbons. Hi, Paul from Charleston, South Carolina. My first time in trivia. All right on, Eric. You're here. Get it. I'm getting ready. I'm I'm just getting through these comments. We're doing it. This is fantastic. There's 50 of you here. I can't believe it. It's it's insane. Uh what else was I gonna say? Uh oh, thumbs ups. I got 18. I'll take it. I've got 18. Uh for this show. That's incredible. Uh let's see here. Um <laughs> cool chess. That's expected, Paul Wilson. Better to be safe. It's on overturn truck this afternoon. Paul Wilson, where was the truck? Oh, no, here we go. Uh, side of the road. I get Dark Hawk. Woot, woot. I made it for trivia. Welcome, Mr. Dark Hawk. Lance Gillespie. Everyone, if you on the roads, be careful out there. It's terrible. Uh, and if you're on the roads, there, Robert Scott. Trivia time. Paul Wilson. Hello, Dark Hawk. Welcome here. Uh, Brittany, the epic is out of Port Canaveral, not Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Port, oh, I, I'm sorry. If I, if I screw that up, I'm sorry. Uh, of course, it's not important to this story at the moment, but I understand. Wendy Thompson, oh yeah, future cruise credit. Lance Gillespie, thumbs up. Uh, Paul Wilson, hello, Wendy, Nurse Nancy and Darkhawk. They can take the ship to my house for repair. I don't require access to the main dining hall and karaoke. Brandy Lockwood, Norwegian needs to give a full refund for the crows. Dwayne, I was here. Nurse Nancy, hello there, Paul Wilson. Paul Wilson, Dark Hawk, isn't that with earplugs? Laugh out loud. Nurse Nancy, you got that right, Lance. Uh, we've had a blizzard all day today in Wisconsin. John Garcia, South Texas, 70 degrees, no snow. You're killing me. You're killing me with that. That's awesome. Fantastic, John. Uh, Nurse Nancy, hi again, Dwayne. Dwayne, uh, Sherry, awesome. Is having a great time on a cruise. Adam uh, Shatowayak, hi Bruce from Minnesota, 10 degrees and about a foot of snow. I know the feeling. I got a foot of snow. We're not supposed to get that around here. We got it. And I was supposed to be in a car tomorrow. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. I got all kinds of food. I'm not going anywhere. Blaine, he, Nurse Nancy, Cat Rose, Linda is going to rain and get windy here. Brittany, let's all give Bruce a thumbs up. Dwayne, thumbs up. Dwayne, hi and bye. John LeBeau, thumbs up. Doc Hawk, um, Paul Wilson, I'm a deep sleeper most of the time. Peter Heckema, epic. If the problem is the diesel generator, they can repair it in the water. If it's the azipods, then it has to go into dry dock for repairs. Remember, the engines make the electricity to power the azipods. Oh, man, Peter. It is something. It is something. Uh, Sylvan, thumbs ups, everybody. Roberta Phillips, hi, Bruce. Linda Lou, hi, Dwayne. Lance, let the trivia begin. Sylvia, Sylvan, uh, uh, does your snake bite? Agnes, hi, TWB folks. Hi, Agnes, New Jersey. Paul Wilson, welcome here, Roberta. Wendy Thompson, the snow missed us, but not a flake in, snipe, in sight here. Agnes, still icing out there. I've caught up to your messages. I'm ready to go for trivia. 54 of you are here in Gray Able. Fantastic. Love it. Um, Bruce, Costco's calling you. Costco, I went to Costco last week when I dumped off uh, Jennifer at her sister's place. There's a Costco in Lethbridge, Alberta. I loaded up. I've got the bagels. I've got the butter. I got the eggs. I got the bacon. I got the sausages. Uh, I got the Swedish meatballs. I'm I'm good. I, I'm I'm good here. Uh, I got I got cheese whiz, Canadian cheese whiz. You guys can't get that in the U.S. Uh, got that at a good price. Uh, we're, we're all set. I'm all set here. It's just me on my own. Uh, I can I can go weeks. <laughs> I got my I got my peeps. I got my food. 
Ah, uh, what do I need? I'm, it's all re I'm ready to roll. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Dixie Walker, hi all. Uh, Darkhawk, Bruce Costco's calling in. Brittany, 50 degrees outside. Jeremy G, hi everybody. Getting cloudy in Rancho. Cucamonga, more rain on the way. Uh, so Tweety, hello everybody. It's raining. Yay, I can see cement for the first time in six days uh, in Seattle or nearby. Dorothy Phillips, hi there. Debbie Emanuel, hi Dixie. Sheila, Bruce is going to eat well. Dorothy, ready for trivia. Sylvia, hey, so Tweety. Jeremy G, haha, -ha, Tweety. Debbie Emanuel, what difference? What's the difference about Canadian cheese whiz? Sylvia, hi, Debbie, Nurse Nancy, cheese whiz, really, Bruce? Laugh out loud. Oh, yeah, you guys don't know. You guys, do, you Americans, you poor, poor people, the most powerful country in the world, and you've got crap when it comes to cheese whiz. We got the good stuff up here. It, it tastes like real cheese. It, really, it's quite good. You put it on toast. You put it on a toasted bagel. It's delicious. Uh, the stuff down in the U.S. is piss water. It's just, it's out. it should be outlawed. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, anyway, yeah, we got at Costco. You can buy Cheese Whiz in Canada in Canadian Costco's, and it comes in one keg jars, gigantic glass keg jars. You buy this stuff at a normal grocery store around these parts. You're talking ten bucks a jar, ten dollars a jar at Costco, four ninety eight. <laughs> I bought two. <laughs> you, you don't have to refrigerate it either. It just sits in your uh, pantry forever. This isn't real cheese. <laughs> this isn't. <laughs> I'm trying to say this without laughing. This isn't really necessarily real cheese. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a Canadian imitation kind of a cheese, which all American cheese is, by the way. Let's not kid each other here. American cheese isn't real either. It's cheese food. Uh, but anyway, this stuff has taste. And uh, when you make macaroni and cheese, like Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese, you get that powder they give you, that cheap stuff. You put that in there. With your milk and your butter, you know, but then you add real cheese. You put the cheese whiz in there, the big honking blob of the stuff, whack, and you mix that in. Oh, makes mac and cheese taste awfully good up here. Takes that El Cheapo Craft Dinner and makes it a real nice cheesy flavor. I've said too much. All right. <laughs> Dorothy, I hate cheese, so I'm good. Uh, Silva, no, no such thing as good cheese. Was, I can't fool Silva on this one. There's no way I'm getting past this. this. I'm not getting this past Silva. There's no way I'm getting past this past Silva. So Bruce is very different to U.S. Cheese Whiz. Laugh out loud. Paul, uh, Paul Wilson, howdy. So tweety. Debbie, hey, I can send you self-addressed packaging, and you can send me a can of the stuff? No, I can't. Uh, Nurse Nancy Cheese Whiz, it really tastes like cheese. <laughs> Why not eat some real cheese? Uh <laughs> A real cheese in a 1K jar like that, that would be like 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? I can't afford that. Uh, I'm a YouTuber. Sylvia, as a hey, Nurse Nancy, uh, too funny. Roberta, cheese, why? Yuck. It's so tweety. Hey, Robert. Julie, I'm laughing my ass off. So tweety. Laughing out loud, Nancy. Nurse Nancy, hi there, Sylvia. And Brittany, Bruce, what is your favorite thing to eat? Agnes, can we say trans fats? We can say trans fats. Uh, processed cheese foods. We can say processed cheese foods. Dorothy Phillips, oh gosh. No, Sylvan Craft Dinner, not in this house. Not in this house. Mark, uh, Mark, Dark Hawk, Nurse Nancy, it's like when people say it tastes like chicken. I, I, I'm like, well, then eat chicken. <laughs> Wendy Johnson, real cheese. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. There's nothing wrong with craft dinner. You take some some uh, some cheddar and then you 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 shave uh, the you know slivers of cheddar in and mix that in. That's excellent. That's fantastic. But when you get when you you know when you're bringing up kids and all that stuff. Not that I broke up, but I br I brought up children. But in my wife's home with the five kids or the four kids, whatever the number of kids they had, cheese whiz was a staple in that. <laughs> That's not what they could afford. It was orange and it was cheesy. And there you have it. Enjoy. All right, that's it. I'm going to the uh, trivia questions right now. I've had enough of this. You've had enough of this. It's time for trivia. Oh my gosh, uh, this is too much fun tonight. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. A real uh, mac and cheese. Uh, Eric Gibbons. Mac and cheese is considered a considered vegetable in this house. <laughs> Uh, that's right. It's one of the four food groups, isn't it? Uh, Mac and cheese. That's two of them right there. Uh, two of the food groups. Lance Gillespie is just going, yee. Nurse Nancy, I get it now, Mr. Darkhawk. So Tweety, uh, so is ketchup, Eric Gibbons. Agnes, New Jersey, laughing a lot. Eric Linda Lou, good food at Sylvan's house. Dorothy, oh, she's laughing. John is just, just wondering. Debbie, Wendy, thinking of real cheese instead of real 
cheese. Uh, they can. Uh, I'm thinking of real cheese. And real cheese. Uh, anyway, real cheese instead of real cheese. Um, Dark Hawk, when growing up, I had to live on government cheese. Uh, Jeremy T, ketchup is dessert with all the sugar in it. <laughs> so uh, I made killer mac and cheese with real cheese, Cat Rose. Um, I made I made great mac and cheese. Uh, Wendy Cheddar Swiss, uh, Sheila Sylvan Forrest, what time is dinner? Roberta, my daughter makes a good mac and cheese. There you go. All right, here you go. First, first quiz. Let's get on with it. Oh my gosh, too much fun. Oh, it's so crazy around here. Um, can you tell me? Here we go. You ready? Uh, uh, just double checking here. Uh, Lance mac and cheese with three different types of cheese. Wow, all day, every day. Brittany, you guys are making me hungry for nothing other than mac and cheese. Roberta, I still won't eat it. Nurse Nancy, now I'm hungry again. Uh, Imogene, we, we make real cheese and mac. Uh, Sylvan, 6 to 7 p.m. every night. That's when I have dinner. Okay. <laughs> Can we do trivia now? Okay, please. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, me as well, Nancy. Um, tell me the names of the largest airlines in the world uh, by the total passenger count. The largest airlines for total international passengers and the airlines that fly to the most destinations. So just guess airlines and I'll tell you which of these you're getting right. I'm looking for the top 10 in each category. Some are in each category, some are not. Okay, here we go. Uh, to change the subject from Mac and Chase, uh, Robert Scott, Delta Airlines. Thank you. Uh, total passengers, number one, Delta, 161 million passengers in a year on Delta. For total international, Delta doesn't rank, uh, but most destinations, Delta, 355 locations, the most in the world. So Delta doesn't is not an international airline by any great massive standards, certainly not in, not in the top 10 in the world, but yeah, domestically and for destinations. Delta is number one. All right, uh, Linda Lou, United Airlines. Yeah, United uh, flies 81.4 million. That's number four in the world. Um, United uh, does not rank as a major international airline. Um, United does not rank in the top 10 for destinations. Um, so Tweety had Delta as well. Mo, uh, Mr. Starcock is coming in with American Airlines. These first are easy, uh, then it gets tougher. Uh, the American Airlines, yeah, 85.7 million passengers, number three in the world. Uh, American for international passengers, 21.1 million, uh, eighth highest in the world. And uh, for locations in total, American comes in in 10th place, 157 different locations. So American makes the list right across the board. Okay, um, United, we got Delta, we have Delta, Delta. Southwest Airlines, Brittany Lockwood, thank you. Uh, number two for passengers carried 101 million, uh, 339,000. Uh, it's not an international airline uh, by any means. Uh, does It might fly in the odd uh, locale, but it's not what it's known for. As far as most destinations goes, not in the list either. Uh, so Southwest just as a volume carrier, domestic USA. Steamer KLM, welcome Steamer. How you doing buddy? Uh, Air France KLM is actually the airline. 71.3 million passengers in total puts it at about sixth place. Uh, KLM is also uh, international, uh, 23.8 million. Air France, 32.5 million. So add them both up, we're at 55 million combined. That's second overall for international travel. And then KLM, Air France, uh, looks like Air France goes to 170 countries. I don't know how many KLM flies to. Uh, it's not in the top 10, but I'm sure they've had more, and that'll add a little more to that total. But nonetheless, they are a force in the airline trade. Sylvia had American. Alan had KLM as well, and there's Nancy Southwest. Darkhawk, Lufthansa. Uh, yeah, Lufthansa, Germany. Uh, for volume, total passengers, 76.5 million, fifth largest in the world. Lufthansa, international passengers, 42.1 million, number two in the world. Lufthansa, most destinations, fourth in the world, 201 locations, major force globally. Um, Lance had American Airlines. Robert Scott Emirates Airways, Emirates uh, out of uh, the UAE, uh, doesn't count for total passengers. It's not a top 10 passenger carrier, but on international passengers, yes, 22.4 million passengers, about seventh in the list. Uh, but not anywhere in the top 10 for the number of destinations, but they are still growing. Uh, Debbie had United. Qantas from BC. Qantas, uh, 
Qantas is not registering on any of the three lists. I don't have them, uh, but I will say that they are getting more and more into the Emirates uh, field, and eventually they may merge. You never know. Uh, Tracy had Delta. So, Tweety, Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines, not in total passengers, not in international passengers, and not in the top 10 for destinations. So it's not big enough to make the top 10 on any of those lists. Brittany had Delta. Uh, Nurse Nancy, uh, uh, Agi Agiana, uh, Asiana Airlines. Um, Asiana does not rank in any of the top 10s uh, across this board here. Uh, let's see, American Airlines, we've done US, US Airlines is defunct. They've been merged now. Uh, Canada or Air Canada, Brittany Lockwood, I'll give you Air Canada. Air Canada does not rank in international or total passengers, uh, but it does rank in number of destinations, 178, fifth overall in the world, but it doesn't have the volume of these other airlines. British Airways, BC, well done. British Airways, uh, 29, point, uh, 29 million for international travel. And 165 locations or destinations for seventh overall in the world. Uh, okay, big player there. Qantas, we've had B, uh, BR Airways, that's British. Emirates, uh, Dorothy, y'all got it. Uh, Sheila, Virgin, Virgin Airlines, not in volume, not an international, and not in location. Not big enough. Uh, National Airlines doesn't rank. Uh, Alaska, no. Air Canada, no. Iceland Air, Iceland Air. Does not rank on any of these. Air France, we've done. Uh, Southwest, we've done. United, we've done. Ryanair, there we go. Ryanair, Mr. Darkhawk. Ryanair has uh, transport 65.3 million people a year. That would be eighth place in the world. Ryanair is number one for international airline travel, 57.6 million. Uh, but Ryanair does not rank in the top 10 for destination locations. But it is number in the top 10 in the other two categories. United, British, Korean Air, Korean Air. Let me see if Korean ranks anywhere. Does not. Or Korean is a big outfit, though. Emirates, American, Air Slobovia. Nice try there, Sylvan. Uh, Southwest Air France, KLM, Alaska, JetBlue. JetBlue, not big enough to rank in any of these uh, rankings. Um, I will apologize. Someone ranked. Someone asked me about U.S. Air, and I thought U.S. Air was already merged in, but in this quiz, it was not. U.S. Air, 50 million passengers. It's uh, a tenth on the list. U.S. Air, uh, third for the most destinations, 231. I think U.S. Air was acquired by whom? Was it United or Delta? I don't think it was American. Um, it's now part of somebody else. Sorry about that. Whoever guessed me that, I uh, just noticed it now. And there we go. Also, there's another defunct airline here if anybody wants to guess it. It's an American. Uh, Frontier Airlines, someone guessing. Uh, Frontier is not in the top ten anywhere. Korean, JetBlue, British Airways, Continental. There it is. Agnes, I'm giving you Continental. Number nine for volume, 62 million. Uh, Continental is also number two for destinations, 351. But I think Continental, is it not American Continental or um, United Continental? Delta Continental. It's one of, the, one of those three. It also merged in. Lufthansa, Air Canada, British Airways, Southwest. How many airlines are there? Silver Airways, KLM, JL, JAL, Japan Airlines, uh, not showing. I'm only looking for one, two, three, four, five, or six more, and we're done. Uh, of all the airlines, Swiss Air, nope, not working. Uh, TWA, long gone. Lufthansa, China, Eastern, uh, no. There's another China, go another direction. China, something else. Uh, I've only flown three times, says Roberta. Singapore Air, Singapore Air, 19 million international passengers, number nine on the list. That's one of them, God. Air Italy. Dahlia, uh, nope, not here. Uh, JetBlue, WestJet, no, I love flying, says Brittany. Caribbean Airlines, no, I who won? I had to let the dog out. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sylvan, Korean Air, Korean Air, um, not showing. No, we tried it already. Qatar Airlines, Qatar, nope. Um, Delta, Qantas, no, Air Canada, China, Southern, yep. China Southern flies 66 million people a year. That's number seven all in the world, in the world, uh, but they're not on any of the other rankings. I have two international airlines left and two most destinations, and we are done. Let's just go through this list here. Air Rouge, Anna, Alaska acquired Virgin. That's right, a Virgin American they acquired. Malaysian Airlines, um, not here. Uh, Amer Jamaica Air, Air France, no. EasyJet, yes, EasyJet. Number three for international passengers, 35.4 million. Leaves us now one for international and two for most destinations. Who else we got here? Azul, uh, Chiricos, no, New Zealand, no, dang, my DC, BC stole my answer. 
Air Italia, no. Australia, no. I know of no other airlines besides Hawaiian. It can't be any of those lists, no. Uh, Vatican Air, Virgin Virgin Qatar Airways, good one, Brittany. Uh, China Airline, TWA, meant to say Qatar Air Eastern, Wow, Ryanair, American, US Air, China, Northern, East Midlands, uh, Japan, Norwegian, Virgin, none of these. Uh, New Zealand, Creston Air, Hawaiian. <laughs> Amy is here. Hi, Amy. How you doing? Welcome to Traveling uh, with Bruce Trivi. We're just finishing the first one. We're getting ready for the second one here. Just a second. Uh, what do we got? Sabina, Belgian Air, Singapore Air. All right. Uh, it's Cathay Pacific. They're the number 10 international carrier at 18.8. SkyWest is a company that flies to 160 airlines and destinations and Turkish Air, 158 locations. And that is the complete quiz right there. We are done on the first one. The airlines that carry the most passengers in total, uh, according to this list, which is uh, several years old, might be five years old before some of the final mergers took place in the US, would be... Delta, Southwest, American, United, Lufthansa, Air France, KLM, Merger, China Southern, Ryanair, Continental, US Air. Airlines with the total highest total international passengers would be Ryanair, Lufthansa, EasyJet, Air France, British Airways, KLM, Emirates, American, Singapore, and Cathay Pacific. And most destinations flown to would be Delta, Continental, US Air, Lufthansa, Air Canada, Air France, British Airways, SkyWest, Turkish Airlines, and American Airlines. That completes our first quiz right there. Let's move on to number two for the night. Can you name the countries that have the most rail passengers per year? What countries have the most rail passengers per year? And let's see how you guys do on that one. And I will set up my marker while you guys fire in some answers. Excuse me about that. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, here we go. Oh, here we are. So Tweety is starting it off with France, the country of France with all those high-speed high speed trains. Sorry, I'm hiccuping here. Yeah, high-speed trains, trains in, Span in France. Sixth most in the world, uh, 1.2 billion passengers a year. 1.2 billion a year on the French Rail networks, incredible. A uh, true Janie Sue, the incredible country known as the United States of America. Um, sorry to say, the United States is not even in the top 20. America does not believe in train travel like other countries do. Uh, even in California, have you heard the latest on California, that high-speed train system? They're going to run it between, are you ready for this? Bakersfield. And Madeira, they're going to run it in the Central Valley for now. They're going to complete it there. They're not completing it to San Francisco or L.A. The whole point of the high-speed railroad was to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco. Uh, they're not completing those two sections. They're doing the middle part first. The new governor is only going to complete the middle section. It is absolutely a disgrace to mankind as a whole that California – with 35 million people aren't in uh, finishing their high-speed rail project. They've sunk billions into, finish the damn thing, and they will come. If you build it, they will come. But you just some politicians, uh, they count the votes rather than do what they're elected to do. This passed the plebiscite. The voters passed it. Build it. Uh, it's so ridiculous. It just kills me. Brittany Lockwood. Bruce. China, what about China Railroad? Uh, what are we doing there? Number one in the world. The Chinese have the number one volume for rail passengers on the planet. 17.1 billion passengers a year. I say it again. 17.1 billion passengers a year on the Chinese rail network. If you build it, they will come. Um, there are no environmentalists stopping Chinese rail. There are no uh, special interests. There are no political parties fighting it to get elected. There is no such thing. They're building it. It's getting done. It is being utilized. And they will be for, as long as I'm around, the number one country for rail. It's incredible. And it's all high-speed electric. It's amazing. Um, BC, USA, keep dreaming about America. It ain't happening in the USA. Julie, London, that's not a country. Uh, but it's a great town. Uh, Lance Gillespie, Italy, Italia, number eight in the world, 622 million passengers a year. Nurse Nancy, USA, you're dreaming. Brittany, Hungary, 
Now, there's an interesting guess. Um, no, Hungary's not in the top 20. Um, Paul Wilson, USA. Uh, 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 China, Debbie, you got it. Carl Peterson, Japan with the bullet trains and all the systems. Yes, number two country in the world. 9.1 billion passengers. Massive uh, system. It's incredible. Uh, Roberta Phillips, India, as antiquated as India is. And it's bad. It is bad. Number three in the world, 8.39 billion a year ride the rails in India. I wouldn't want to be on most of those trains, but what can I say? Rob had Japan. Uh, Eric, USA merged with American Airlines. Thank you, sir, so much for telling me that. That's great. Jeremy, Sweden uh, is his guest. Uh, Sweden for rail traffic does not rank in the top 20. Uh, UK, Lance is linked in the United Kingdom. Number five in the world. UK, 1.7 billion passengers a year. Very popular. China, we have France, Brittany Lockwood. We have it. Canada, Peter Heckema. No, Canada is as pathetic as the USA, if not more so. Mind you, we only have 35 million people, but we had once a national rail system. It's now segmented into small little chunks. It's a political football. No private company wants it. The government runs it and loses all kinds of money on it. It's a political football. Uh, and the government just will not step up and build it out. Uh, they could then privatize it, but no one wants to do it. Uh, the airlines uh, dominate uh, Canada, of course. And uh, what can I say? It's a political football. Debbie had Japan. Uh, no no Zillion, number two had Japan. Thank you uh, for joining me. BC, the UK. Agnes, Germany. Yes, Germany, number four in the world. Two billion people a year ride the rails in a country of 60 million people. Incredible. What a system. Uh, Spain, Brittany Lockwood, España, number nine in the world, 578 million. Spain is building out their rail system aggressively. It's paying off. Nurse Nancy, what about Russia? Number seven in the world, one billion people a year ride the rails in Russia. John Lebeau had England. Frank uh, Pitaro is guessing Italy. Uh, we've got Italy. Frank, Frank, welcome to the show. Tracy, United Kingdom. Jeremy, Germany. Uh, we've done that. Paul Wilson, Germany. Uh, BC, Japan. Lance had China, Brittany, Korea, 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 um, South Korea, number 20 in the world at 131 million, small country, uh, but a lot of riders, uh, Tracy had China, Amy, China, uh, Sharon had Switzerland, number 11 in the world, Switzerland, 475 million a year, the national priority of Switzerland is rail, as is many European countries, Nurse Nancy, Austria, number 15 in the world, 245 million people riding the rails in a country of 10 million, it's serious business. Um, elect uh, Politicians lose elections if the trains don't work in Austria. The opposite to the United States, totally the opposite. Tracy Dunlop had Japan. Uh, Nurse Nancy, Australia, I don't think so. No, no, too wide open at this point. Not enough people. Uh, Japan, no, are we done? The lion is guessing Iceland, uh, not for rail travel, sorry. Germany, it's, uh, from Eric, thank you. South Korea, we've done Italy, we've done Netherlands, BC. Netherlands, uh, 12th overall, 346 million. Country has 5 million people. 346 million ride the rails. That is something serious. Uh, Frank, Brazil does not rank in the world, sir. No, Japan, we have France, we have Italy, we have Switzerland, we got Italy, we got Philippines, uh, not ranking for trains. Austria, we have South Korea, we have India, we did. Germany, China, Canada, we've done it. Kenya, not in the list. Russia, we did. So do we need to saw off California, let it float off into the Pacific? There's there's a critic. <laughs> Sheila, uh, Norway is her guess. Uh, nope, uh, not up there. Uh, Germany, we've done. India, we've done. UK, we've done. Jeremy G, they should have uh, the rail. They should have the rail from LA to Vegas. I agree. They should have a, a secondary branch and Vegas to Frisco. And you got the mighty triangle. And then Frisco to Denver, Frisco to Salt Lake City. It's so obvious they don't get it they just don't get it uh they don't get it uh wendy had china Brittany is guessing turkey uh the country of turkey not on the list debbie manual tweeting i am hoping an earthquake will saw off the bad part of the state on its own dang did i say that <laughs> or were you thinking it uh one or the other so tweeting is laughing out loud debbie uh, paul wilson canada no bangladesh tracy is wondering uh no bangladesh is not on the list Jeremy, no Tweety, then, then our taxes will go up even more. No, no, no. Taiwan. Uh, yes, Taiwan uh, is number 13 in the world. 233 million in an island nation. It's huge for rail. Uh, Brittany, Nepal. Uh, no, not Nepal. Norway. Uh, Norway is not on the list here anymore. Ireland, I don't have it. 
Sweden uh, don't have either. Uh, Mexico, nope, not Mexico, not a real, not a real country. Taiwan, we have Thailand, Thailand, not here either. No, Malaysia and uh, let's see, Malaysia, no. Um, uh, about India, Silva saying, is that passengers inside the cars are hanging outside? Yeah, pay tickets and then who knows how many more, Sylvan. You're right. John, uh, Chile, <clears throat> no, not Chile. Uh, Korea, we've done. Soul Tweety's laughing out loud. Uh, Belgium, uh, yeah, number 14 in the world. 229 million. Country has, what, five, six million people, if that. Julie, I knew it. London wasn't a country, darn it. Uh, Nurse Nancy, Belgium, uh, ne Mexico, Netherlands, we've done already. Um, Belgium, we've done. Norway, we've done. Sweden, Never mind so much to learn. Greenland, no. Pakistan, um, no, not Pakistan. India, yes. Pakistan, no. Amazing to me, too. I'm behind everyone on my horrible internet. Eric, uh, Eric, you may want to reload and give it a try. Roberta, in India, in India and on top, uh, on the sides, everywhere. Exactly. Frank, Nepal, no. Um, uh, what do we got here? Bangladesh, Greece, and India, neither, neither, neither. Iceland, Philippines, uh, let's see, Czech Republic, uh, yep, number 17 in the world, 170 million. Country's got 4 million people. Uh, Cuba, Dubai, Pakistan, no. Uh, Egypt, uh, no. Uh, UK, Poland, and South Africa. Poland is number 19, 140 million people. South Africa, no. I'm looking for a country, two in Europe, one in Asia. That's what I'm looking for. The country in Asia is the most populated <clears throat> Muslim country in the world, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two in Europe, one very small, uh, one in the middle of a war right now with the Soviet, uh, with the Russians. Uh, let's see here. We have Poland, South Africa, Iran, and Slovenia. No, no, and no. Um, looking for Indonesia. Thank you. There's Indonesia, number one country with a Muslim population, 16th in the world, 199 million passengers a year. Uh, Mongolia, no, two in Europe now, two in Europe. Luxembourg, Turkey, nope. Uh, one starts with the letter U, one starts with the letter D in Europe. Thank you, everybody. I'm having a little pause here. TWB travel mug, a little mug here, TWB logo. Caffeine free. Thank you very much. Ukraine, thank you very much. Ukraine, number 10 in the world, 485 million people take the train in the Ukraine, and they're having they're in a war with Russia. Unbelievable. What a country. Um, we're looking for the country starts with the letter D. There it is. Brittany, Denmark, thank you. 18th place, 163 million. That does it, does it right there for the countries with the highest ridership on the rails. It's China, 17 billion. Japan, 9 billion. India, 8.3 billion. Germany, 2 billion. United Kingdom, 1.7 billion. France, 1.1. Russia, 1 billion. Italy, 600 million. Spain, 578. Ukraine, 485. Switzerland, 475. Netherlands, 346. Taiwan, 233. Belgium, 229. Austria, 245. Indonesia, 199. Czech Republic, 170 million. Denmark, 163. Poland, 140. South Korea, 131. USA, nowhere to be found. It might be 60 million, if that. It is a joke. Uh, the country, the richest in the world, the most powerful, all the room in the world to build, and it doesn't do it. They build highways. And they allow planes. What can I say? It's it's America. It's the way it is. Okay. Can you name the top 25 contributing countries to the 2009 United Nations regular budget? What countries send the most money? What countries send the most money to the United Nations uh, as of 2009? This is a pet peeve of somebody who's in the White House right now. Let me know. Um, Debbie Manuel said, well, it's the United States of America. You are correct. The USA uh, contributes 22% of the budget to the United Nations, uh, $598 million a year. Now, keep in mind, however, <laughs> let's keep one little tiny thing in mind. The United States happens to be the home of the United Nations, and therefore, the United States receives unbelievable amounts of money because all those delegates need a place to live. They all need a place to eat. They all got to get around. Uh, the, all those delegations that come in from around the world into the United Nations for seminars and conferences, spending cash in the USA like you cannot believe. So I think the USA gets a good deal. They spend $598 million, but they get back that much and maybe even more. The amount of jobs created from the United Nations in the USA is massive. 
any country in the world would love to have the United Nations in their country, uh, but it's not going anywhere. It's in New York, and it'll stay in New York. That is expensive real estate where those people live and work. It's pretty good. Agnes, we love our cars. Brittany Lockwood, USA. Ashila uh, Bossinger, how about China? Does it contribute to the uh, United Nations? Uh, China does. Uh, number, they're about number seven in the world, 2.7% of the budget. 64 million, kind of small for the size of their country, I would say. Uh, Paul Wilson, USA. Uh, Linda Liu, uh, what about France? Uh, does it contribute to the United Nations? Yes, 6.3%, $153 million for a country that is about, uh, in population, maybe one-sixth as big as the USA. Uh, they contribute more per person than America does, when you think about it. Uh, but they don't get any of the dough from the United Nations because it's not in France. It's in the USA. So you got to equal it out. Eric, the USA. True Janie, USA. Adam is thinking the United Kingdom. Uh, yeah, 6.6% of the budget. Number four country, $161 million a year. The UK pays its fair share. Uh, Canada. Yes, Canada is at 3%. It is the world's eighth largest contributor to the United Nations. And considering Canada is one tenth the size of America, it contributes 72 million. Now, that would be equal to 720 for America. American contributes 598. So Canadians, on an individual basis, actually contribute more money to the United Nations than America does. How about that? I kind of like that. I'm, you know, I kind of live in Canada, so I, you know, kind of brag about that. How about that one? Um, uh, BC says USA. BC says Canada. Peter Heckema says Canada. Jeremy G. The Netherlands. Uh, let's take a look for the Netherlands. Yep, 1.9 percent, 45 million bucks for a country of maybe five million people. They contribute a lot more per person than the United States does. Uh, let's see. Nosy on the UK. Uh, the Brittany UK. Tracy Dunn of USA. So tweet. What countries are supposed to or actually do send money? Uh, any member of the, U, uh, the uh, UN should be sending money to the UN. You're part of the international community. If you've got a delegation there, you should be contributing to the United Nations, I would think. Uh, cool Jazz Amtrak is failing here. You are correct, Cool Jazz. Um, Italy just came in. Italy, yep, 5.1%, 123 million bucks, a pretty good chunk of change in the top 10. Uh, France, we have Germany. Germany, number three in the world. For contributions, 8.6% of the budget, $208 million for a country that has 50, 60 million. The United States has 350. That's more money per person than America gives without question. Uh, Peter has France, uh, Tracy, Canada, BC, the United Kingdom, Carl Peterson, Germany, uh, and Nozilia, Nos I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, N2, Belgium. Uh, Belgium is where on this list number, here we are. Looks like about the uh, thirteenth, about the fifteenth largest. One point one percent of the budget, twenty-six million dollars. Country has the country has maybe three, four million people. It's a pretty sizable donation for their size. Agnes has Germany, Ger Jeremy, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland. One point two percent, twenty-nine million. That country has less than seven million in their population. That is a sizable donation per person. Brittany Lockwood, Spain, Espana, three percent of the budget. 72 million, that's a sizable amount of money for that country to donate or to pay towards the budget of the United Nations. Uh, Eric Gibbons, Agent Orange. Uh, uh, Nurse Nancy, Spain, uh, Switzerland came in. Poland, Poland just showed up. Is that uh, on the list at all? Poland is not in the top 25, no. Uh, Spain, we have Italy, we've done, I believe, yes. Continuing on, Mexico, yeah, 2.2%. 55 million a year going into um, into the uh, United Nations, about a tenth of the U.S. roughly, maybe an eleventh. Um, for a third world nation, not bad, uh, not a bad donation. Uh, Adam, Japan, number two in the world. Japan, 16.6 percent of the budget, 405 million, way more than the United States gives on a per person basis, way more, maybe double. That it maybe even triple. It's a lot more on a per person basis. Netherlands has just come in. We've done it. Uh, Germany, we've done. Italy, we've done. Netherlands, China, Portugal. Portugal is in here. It is here, number 25 at half a percentage point, 12.8 million uh, for the size of that country. Sizable donation, size, sizable payment. The line says all the above. Uh, Jeremy, Norway, Russia, we've got, we've got. Um, Let's close it. Do you know what the UN causes? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I'd rather have people talking than not. Russia, sorry, here we are, 1.2%, 29.2, woefully inadequate. The Russians are not paying their fair share. There's a country definitely not paying their fair share. Uh, Linda Lou, Mexico, uh, we get not a not worth it. Oh, Agnes, Agnes, you just don't know. Uh, Brittany, uh, Norway, Japan, Bolivia. Bolivia, I don't think is here. No, Bolivia's not here. I agree, Agnes, put it somewhere else. I don't think so, Deb. I don't think so. Uh, it's pretty good business in New York City. Agnes, take it. I'll give it away on behalf of those who are tired of it, uh, laughing out loud. Uh, Brittany of uh, the Vatican. Um, I don't believe the Vatican is to uh, the United Nations necessarily. Uh, let's see. Wendy has a USA. Brazil. Wait, uh, Brittany. Brazil. Bruce, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, 0.9%. No, 21 million. That's a little light. Uh, Brazil could step it up. Argentina. Argentina is not showing on the list, and I'm surprised at that. Great Britain we have. Ha, Brittany. John LeBeau, Cuba. No, 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 Cuba way too small. Learn something new every day. So she, uh, Brittany, Colombia. Colombia? No, not here. We are missing some countries still. You should be called useless. Brittany, Russia, uh, laughing a lot. I'm on a roll, says Agnes. What is the money used for? Uh, well, to pay the building, uh, to keep it up and running, uh, to... Uh, to fund a whole bunch of organizations around the world, especially in third world nations. You do, you and I do not see a lot of the work that the UN does because we don't live in an impoverished country. Uh, my uh, brother-in-law, one of my, I guess he's a brother-in-law, he uh, was uh, 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 fortunate enough to work for the UN for a number of years uh, in African countries to help us establish water systems, uh, establish sewer systems and keep them up and running. Uh, to save lives. In other words, if you can show them how to keep the water clean, you don't have to send medicine to keep them alive from the dirty water. Uh, kind of makes sense. You don't need to send doctors for dysentery because if they have clean water, they won't get the dysentery. They can then concentrate on sending their kids to school to be educated than rather than to be in the hospital and die of dysentery or other diseases. Stuff like that. Uh, we don't see this because we're not in that kind of environment and this costs millions and billions and that's what it's used for uh and many many other things of course uh julie kuwait the country of kuwait bruce is it on here nope uh, too tiny to make this list hi guys i'm news to live chat so check in to see all you're doing the laugh outside bad intro diane diane how are you or dion how are you welcome to the show we're doing trivia we're looking for the number one contributors, the top 25 contributors to the budget of the United Nations as of 2009. Brittany Lockwood, what about India, Bruce? Uh, I think we've done India. Have we not done India? Let me just double check here. Uh, uh, you know what? I don't have India here at all, and that is an outrage. The second largest population country in the world, and they're not in the top 25 on this list. There's someone who's lagging right there. Um, Agnes saying, hi, Dion. Brittany, hungry. Uh, Dion, hi, Agnes. Uh, Dion, oh, okay, just heard about what it's about. Brittany, Honduras, no, Dion, welcome, we're having trivia. Brittany Lockwood, Guatemala, Croatia, uh, North Korea, haha. Uh, let's see here, so, uh, see if there's any of these other countries. None of those are listed. South Korea is 2.2%, 52 million, very good donation from their end. Um, let's see here, Dion, okay, Paul, Austria, Austria, yes, 0.9%, 21 million, fair deal there. Taiwan does not show here. I'm not even sure if they're a member of the United Nations because of China. Belize uh, is not here. Um, Costa Rica, no, too small to rank here. Australia, yes, Australia, 1.8%, 43 million. That is a sizable donation for a 25 million population country. Um, let's see here. Ireland, uh, no, too small. New Zealand, not here. No, too small. Uh, good one. Uh, Australia, we just did. Brazil needs to step it up. I agree. India needs to step it up too. Spain, we've done. Toronto would love the UN to move there. Oh, would that be good for Canada? Oh, man, that would be awesome. Uh, the country of Turkey, uh, not showing on the list. That's another country woefully inadequate. They come to the UN. They speak there. Wanted to throw in some cash, you guys. Estonia, no, thanks, Paul. Just been there. Uh, Uganda, Egypt, and Kenya, uh neither neither and neither um nice to know so sheila finland uh another country yes a 0.6 percent 13.7 million from finland germany south korea thanks bruce this is learning uh bruce you are better than my history classes in school Brittany, turkey greece um greece yes 0.6 percent 14.5 million from greece turkey not on this list shameful um 
let's see, Paul Wilson, do you remember any of it? Uh, Carl Peterson, Japan, Sweden, Malaysia are these guesses coming in here. I uh, don't have any of those. Uh, Sweden, I do. Yes, 1.1%. 26 million from Sweden, sizable donation for the size of their country. Dubai, that's not a country. Bahrain and Panama. I have three left, by the way. Uh, Algeria, Jamaica, Morocco. No, I'm looking for two in Europe, one in the Middle East. That's who I'm looking for. Two in Europe, one in the Middle East. These three countries are well to do. Uh, they can easily afford it. Um, and uh, all three of them should be contributing what they're contributing. Uh, they are definitely global players. Um, we've done the US, Japan, Germany, UK, France, Italy, Canada, Spain, China, Mexico, South Korea, Netherlands, Australia, Switzerland, Russia, Belgium, Sweden, Austria, Brazil, Greece, Finland, and Portugal. Three countries to go. I'm looking for two out of, of Europe, one in the Middle East. Uh, we've got UAE, Israel, Switzerland, um, Pakistan, Spain, Saudi Arabia. There's Saudi Arabia. That's the Middle East country I'm looking for, 18.2 million. Um, I'm looking now for two uh, European countries, one starting with the letter N, one with the letter D. And we've got this one done. Uh, one with the letter N, one with the letter D, both in Europe, both uh, G20 countries. Um, one of them is a G8. Uh, Denmark, thank you. That's the D country, 18 million. And the N country in Europe, in the northern part of Europe, Norway. Thank you. There it is, 10, 19 million from Norway. There you have it. One more thing about the UN. Uh, it keeps Americans alive. It keeps actually helps Americans not get killed. Why? Because the United Nations supplies troops into war zones to keep the peace, and American soldiers do not have to be sent in. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, the UN would be better off for UN to have forces than Americans or other countries. Saves uh, attacks against certain countries. Um, attacks against the UN are rarer or much rarer than countries against any uh, attacks against any particular country, and that's where the UN comes in very handy. And so, 598 million from the US. A bargain, a bargain to fund the UN for that, to get back what they're getting because it keeps American people and personnel from going into risky situations and one American life is priceless, uh, let alone thousands. And so that's what the UN is for. Um, that's why it's a good thing. The President, Will, uh, President Woodrow Wilson, I believe, established the, uh, the uh, League of Nations, which became the United Nations after the Second World War. And uh, there you go. Um, I think it's a good thing. But then I'm not American. I'm on the outside looking in, so it's easy for me. From this angle, I get it. Um, uh, yes, Wendy, you saw the video. I've got the same video loading up on my channel after this show. Uh, you saw that. Very good. Sheila, thanks, Bruce. I love quizzes. All right, let's go. Uh, we disagree greatly. That's okay, Agnes. It's free, it's free country where you are. It's free country where I am. St I still love you. You know, It's all good. Uh, let's see here. I got another quiz. It's my second last one. I've got 32 thumbs ups. Uh, can you name the top 15 vodka export countries? What countries in the world export the most vodka? All right, let's go, baby. Let's get out of the United Nations and let's talk vodka, man. Uh, what countries export most vodka uh, around the world? And let's find this one out. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, Jeremy G is thinking Mexico. For vodka exports, it's not not in the top ten, not in the top fifteen. Sorry, not Mexico. Uh, we got Nozilia and Sheila and Linda Lou and Brittany. Uh, well, sorry, not Brittany. Sorry, everyone there is going with Russia. Carl's going with Russia. Russia number four in the world. They export uh, two hundred thirty-five million dollars a year, about eight and a half percent of the world's vodka. Uh, Brittany had Mexico. Carl of Russia. And same with Debbie. Brittany Lockwood, España, Spain for vodka exports. Nope, not there. Uh, Amy had Russia, Jeremy had Russia, Paul Wilson, St. Thomas. <laughs> no, not St. Thomas. Um, um, you know, they have to make it and export it, right? Sylvain Forrest, what about France? Number two in the world for vodka exports, 491 million, 17.6% of the world's vodka is exported from France. Uh, Nozilia, uh, N2, the USA for vodka exports, number 11 in the world, the United States, 72 million a year, 2.6% of the world export market. The USA, Wendy Thompson, a first time cruiser is not impressed with 50% off next cruise. There you go, I agree with that. Amy, uh, France, we've got it. Brittany, USA, we got it. Paul, USA, 
Linda Liu, a Finland, um, Finland, yeah, number nine in the world for vodka, 90 million, 3.2%. Well done. I think of Finlandia vodka myself. Eric Gibbons, Poland, number five, right behind Russia, 162 million, 5.8%. Poland makes a lot of bucket potatoes, uh, unique potatoes. Brittany Lockwood, <clears throat> Italy, uh, number 13, 43 million, one and a half percent of the world's vodka is exported from Italy. Uh, Alan Carter, Canada, what about Canada, Bruce? Are they on the list anywhere? Number 15, they just made the list, 24 million a year, about 1% of the market. Uh, Bruce, uh, Peter Heckman, Bruce, I think it was Lester Pearson who started the League of Nations. Uh, I thought it was Woodrow Wilson back in the uh, the end of the First World War. Uh, but I think that Lester Pearson was uh, greatly involved in the uh, in uh, the United Nations uh, per in particular. Uh, cool Jazz, where is Robert when you need him? Uh, Paul Wilson, Germany for vodka exports, number seven in the world, uh, 120 million, 4.3 percent. Uh, 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 Peter, we're gonna have to read this up on Google li later. <laughs> we'll have to check it out. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's see who's next here. Uh, Debbie Manuel, USA, love me. Love me some Tito's. Peter Heckema, Canada. Sheila, France. Peter Heckema, I'm an right Lion, Jamaica. Jamaica for vodka exports. Nope. Um, Brittany Lockman, New Zealand for vodka exports. Nope. Um, let's see here. Love it. Trivia, 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 says Julie. Brittany Lockwood, Australia for vodka exports. Now, no. Ukraine, uh, yeah, number eight in the world. 100 million a year, 3.6% of the, of the the trade. Carl uh, Peterson, Sweden, number one. Exporter of vodka in the world is Sweden, 100, uh, 579 million, half a billion bucks, 20% of the market. Sweden dominates. Sylvan, didn't we do this one before? Way back, way back, I think we did. Uh, you should remember every answer. Um, Norway and Mexico, uh, no and no. Germany, we've done. Alexa said Woodrow Wilson did start League of Nations first. Um, uh, Sheila, Belgium, Hungary. Uh, no and no. I would have thought Hungary would have been in there, but no. Mexico, Ireland, Finland, Ireland for potatoes. No, no, no. Finland, we've done. I'm looking for a country in Europe. One, two, three, three countries. Um, at least three uh, in Europe, and I need one in uh, in uh, Asia. Uh, and I'm surprised at this one uh, because there's something not right here, but I'll I'll, I'll address it in a minute. Uh, we got Ireland, Iceland, and Poland. Um, no, no, and no. <clears throat> we've got uh, Brazil and Russia. We've already done Russia. Uh, no, and uh, we've got one here. No potatoes, says Sheila. China and Japan, neither of those. Uh, Denmark, um, no. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, tried, I think, Denmark already. Uh, any more guesses coming in here? Uh, let's see here. China and Denmark. Indonesia and Sweden. We did Sweden. Indonesia, no. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, uh, Germany and Hungary, uh, no and no. Um, no, I'm looking for uh, the number three exporter. Um, I'm surprised at this one myself. It's uh, two words uh, in Europe. Uh, what do we got? Germany, Hungary, uh, um, um, was that Ireland? Uh, Netherlands, Malaysia. Netherlands, number six, $140 million worth of uh, vodka, 5% uh, of the market. Um, um, uh, Japan, no, no, uh, not. I need another country in Asia, but not Japan, not Malaysia. Uh, and uh, just double checking here, these other guesses have come through here uh, already. Um, I think a country that makes a lot of beer, they also export vodka um, in Europe. Uh, then there's a, another European country that is very near Finland, near Russia and Finland, way up there, small little country. Uh, Taiwan, Singapore, Singapore. It's Singapore, uh, forty-six million dollars uh, worth. I some I somehow believe, I gotta believe that perhaps uh, Singapore imports uh, raw vodka from various sources, blends it, and exports it. I, I can't guarantee that, but I'm surprised that Singapore is an exporter. Um, it's forty-six million a year, one percent of the market. Not a big chunk, but there it is. Um, Norway, Ukraine. Uh, we've done already. Where are we at here? Um, uh, Bolivia and Greenland. Uh, no, no, neither of those. Uh, Latvia, yes, it's Latvia, number 10, 85 million a year, 3% of the market. Um, I have one more country here that's a letter B in Europe, and another country starts with a letter U, and it's two words, and they're really known for beer. 
uh, but they're uh, a major vodka exporter. I was surprised at this country being in here. Um, let's see here. Uh, any more coming? Um, the country with the B is Belarus. Uh, I was surprised at that in a way. 35 million is not a big producer. But the country there, thank you, Carl. You have it. Um, but I'm now looking for the uh, country in the Europe. starts with the letter U. Uh, it's a two-word country known for beer. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, United Kingdom. Yeah, United Kingdom, the number three exporter of vodka. Uh, 329 million a year, 11.8% of the world market. Uh, a lot of potatoes grown in the UK. Uh, they produce vodka too. I was surprised at that, at that uh, answer. Here are the top 15 countries. Sweden, France, UK, Russia, Poland, Netherlands, Germany, U Ukraine, Finland, Latvia, United States, Singapore, Italy, Belarus, and Canada. Those are your number 15, 1 to 15, exporters of vodka in the void, um, leaving me with one quiz left to go. And how many are hanging around? 32 still here. We'll have no trouble getting this one. I think you guys will do well with this. Uh, it shouldn't take you long. It's possible we've done this quiz a long time ago, perhaps. I'm not sure. But I saw this one again. I thought, you know, I was just thinking about this, and I thought, ah, I'm going to bring this one up again because it's a good one. Uh, here we go. Um, these are all fakes of school jazz. Jeremy G., all this time I thought the queen was drinking tea. Uh, there you go. You see, she's slipping it in there. All right. Here we go. 33 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. This is our last quiz of the evening. Can you name all the Steven Spielberg movies he's directed? Steven Spielberg movies that he has directed. Name them off. Some of the biggest movies of all time. Fire away and tell me what's going on. Someone's just telling me they have family on the epic. I'm looking forward to reading that message. Let's see what we've got. The top, the, the, the 32 films that Steven Spielberg has directed. What are their names? Here they come. E.T. from Carl, Amy, and Cool Jazz. E.T., the extraterrestrial, 1982. Absolutely. The next one is Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park was 1993. It's already 10, 26 years ago. Can you believe that? The first Jurassic Park is 26 years old. Stand by me. Sheila is saying... The movie, Stand By Me. I'm looking. I'm looking. Stand By Me. Did he direct Stand By Me? Did he really? Did he really? I don't see it here. Uh, why am I missing this? Well, uh, Jaws, Alan Carter, uh, 1975, his third movie, Jaws. Back to the Future. No, he did not direct Back to the Future. He was involved in it. But that was actually a Zemeckis, a Robert Zemeckis direction film. Uh, batteries not included. Uh, let's see here. No, no, I don't have that one as a directed by Spielberg either. He may have been involved in it, but he's been directed. Schindler's List. Oh, yeah. Schindler's List, 1993, well, right after Jurassic Park, he did Schindler's List. Um, Cujo. Cujo, uh, am I, uh, 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 we're, we're on the wrong track here, guys. No, it's not Cujo. E.T., we got Wendy. How do you think she puts up with Philip? Uh, <laughs> Linda Lou. Star Wars. Um, Star Wars. That was not, uh, that was not our friend, Mr. Spielberg. That is uh, Lucas, George Lucas films. Uh, Amy Conrad, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes, Raiders, 1981, uh, 1981 Raiders of the Lost Ark. Back to the Future 2. No, Goonies. Goonies, he did not do Goonies. Um, let's go through the next one. Close Encounters, we have I'm Out. Don't even know who that is. Paul Wilson, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the guy who made those movies. Sheila, Pet Cemetery. Uh, Pet Cemetery. Uh, no, no. Um, Back to the Future, no. Laughing a lot, Wendy. Debbie, did he do Back to the Future 3? He did not. Amy, uh, AI, Artificial Intelligence. AI, yes, 2001. He did that one. Um, movies, Ugh. Peter Heckema, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Um, not showing it here, sorry. Saving Private Ryan, yes. Saving Private Ryan, 1998 with Tom Hanks. Um, yikes, no clue. Saving Private Ryan came in. Jaws number two. Jaws two, he did not do. Jaws 2 or Jaws 3, 
He only did the first one and got the hell out of there. He had enough of that. I never remember movie names. Jeremy G, Saving Private Ryan. Brittany Lockwood, Jaws 2. Nope. Sheila, laugh a lot. I was thinking Stephen King. Sheila, my bad. Uh, Jeremy G, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. 1977, right after Jaws. He did that one. Uh, Rob Reiner did Stand Up, Stand By Me. Rob Reiner, right? Avatar. I don't think so. I don't think he did Avatar. That would have been um, the guy who did uh, Titanic, isn't it? I believe that's who did Avatar. E.T., we have The Car. No, not The Car. Gremlins. No, the Indy Gremlins. Transformers. I don't think so. Uh, no. Uh, Ready Player One. Yes. Ready Player One, 2018. He just did that movie. Brittany, Steven Stubler, and I have something in common. We're both dys 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 dyslexic. Uh, hard for me to even say that. Uh, Schindler's List we've done. 1941, Amy, yes, correct. The, the bomb, he bombed on that one. 1979, he was so depressed after that one. Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones, the Temple of Doom. That's right. What can I say, Bruce? I must be in this truck too much. Maybe, Paul, maybe. Debbie, uh, Transformers. Uh, no, he has not done that movie. Uh, I hear you, Agnes, uh, Linda Lou. Um Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, 1989. Artificial uh, color purple. The color purple, 1985. He did that one. The Shining. Um, I'm not sure about that one. He did not do that one. Um, the 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 movie Hook. Yes, with Robin Williams, 1991. He did that one. Harry Potter. No, I'm on track now. No vodka. Um, Indiana Jones. BC is thinking. How about Indiana Jones and the Temple, the Kingdom? Of the Crystal Skull, the last one, 2008. Um, for sure, Trucker Paul. Uh, BFG, yes, he did the movie called BFG. I thought so. Uh, the BFG, and that was 2016. Kelly Haston, have a great night. Thank you, Kelly. I got 36 thumbs ups despite my lateness and tardiness. Duel and Tintin, says the lion. Duel and Tintin. I don't have anything like that. I'm looking for a movie that stars. Um, <clears throat> he was a child actor when he did this movie, but in later life, as a grown up, he played Batman. Uh, do you remember who that guy is? Uh, he played Batman as he grew up, but he was a child actor in 1987 when Steven Spielberg did this World War II movie. Uh, wasn't Private Ryan, though. It was another one. Uh, Brittany, The Adventures of Tintin and Amy Poltergeist. He did not do Poltergeist. Uh, the Adventures of Tintin, 2011. He did that one. Thank you very much. Um, another movie he did, uh, by the way, he did Lost World, Jurassic Park. He did that one. Um, he did a movie with, uh, with um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, when Leonardo was just coming on in 2002. Anybody know that movie? A Beetlejuice, Empire of the Sun, and the lion got it. Empire of the Sun starred that child actor who became Batman later. Very well done. Can't remember his name right now, but uh, that's true. Apocalypse Now. Uh, he did not do that movie. Um, uh, let's see. Other movies I'll give you hints on. He did another movie with Tom Hanks. Uh, this one was in an airport. You remember that one? He did another movie with Tom Hanks. Just out a couple of years ago, it was set in Berlin, West Berlin and East Berlin. Remember that one? Titanic. He did not do Titanic. Lincoln. He did Lincoln in 2012. Christian Bale is the name of that actor. The child actor Christian Bale became Batman later on. Exactly. Thank you, the line. Catch me if you can. Yes. With, um, with, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, thank you very much. Black Hawk, no. James Cameron did Titanic, correct. Airplane, no. The Terminal, yes, he did the Terminal with Tom Hanks. Stuck in the Terminal. Eat to bite, bite to eat, eat to bite, bite to eat. Yes. Agnes, I tried. Agnes, we all try. I love you, Agnes. Brittany Lockwood, the Terminal, right on. <laughs> well done. Okay. Let's see. Other movies. Um, he just did one with Tom Hanks and with... Uh, with the, the actress that gets nominated for an Academy Award every year, uh, it was all about the newspaper. What was that one called? About the Washington newspaper. What was the movie called? Uh, Britney just had the terminal. Carl Peterson, Bridge Something. That's right, Bridge Something. What is it? Bridge Something. What is that movie? Um, he did another movie about an animal in the First World War. What was that movie called? Uh, let's see here. Any more coming in? He did a movie with Tom Cruise. 
uh, Blank Report. Anybody know the movie of that one? Uh, what was that one called? Carl Peterson, The Post. Val Lambert, Lambert, The Post. That is correct. He did a movie with Tom Hanks and the gal who gets nominated every year for an Academy Award, not Sandra Bullock. No, no, the gal, the woman who's had a million nominations. can't remember her name. Uh, Brittany Warhorse, thank you. That is the war story of the First World War, Warhorse. Um, thank you. Minority Report. Thank you, Glenn. Minority Report with Tom Cruise. He did a movie about the uh, Olympics in Germany when uh, the Israeli athletes got assassinated, got killed. Uh, the revenge that uh, was put together by Israel to get these guys. What was the name of that movie? Uh, he directed that movie. Um, Debbie Manuel, great trivia as always, Bruce. Learn more every time. Stay safe, my friend. Hope you can visit again soon. Laid off secretary. Laid off secretaries have been pulling double duty uh, at work. Yuck, toodles all. Debbie, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me as always. I love you. Bridge of Spies, Carl Peterson, you got it. Bridge of Spies 2015 with Tom Hanks. Love that movie. That was well done. Twilight Zone, he did not do the Twilight Zone. Um, a Bridge Too Far, he did not do that uh, movie either. Um, Good night, Debbie says Agnes. Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep, and Tom Hanks were in the post together. Thank you, Sheila. You're wonderful. Linda Lou De by Deb. The war, the movie I'm looking for. There's another movie with Tom Cruise. It was The War of the Worlds. He did with Tom Cruise. And then the movie Munich, which was the revenge by the Israelis against the Palestinians for killing their athletes at the Munich Olympics. He obviously he did a movie called Always in 1989. He did another movie called Amistad in 1997. And he did one called the Sugarland Express in 74. And in 64, he did something called Firelight when he was probably just a college student or a young kid. And those are the Steven Spielberg movies that he directed. Let me read them off to you from beginning to end. It's Firelight, the Sugarland Express, Jaws in 75. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 1941. Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. The E.T., The Extraterrestrial in 82. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in 84. The Color Purple, Empire of the Sun, Always. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in 89. Hook, Jurassic Park in 93. Schindler's List, 93. Amistad, 97. The Lost World, Jurassic Park, 1997. Saving Private Ryan, 1998. AI, Artificial, Artificial Intelligence, 2001. Catch Me If You Can, 2002. Minority Report, 2002. The Terminal in 04. Munich in 05. War of the Worlds in 05. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull in 08. The Adventures of Tintin in 11. War Horse, 2011. Lincoln, 2012. Bridge of Spies, 2015. The BFG, 2016. The Post, 2017. And Ready Player One in 2018. 32 in all, many of them incredibly successful. That is trivia for tonight. Started late, finished late, but we got it done. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Thank you for tolerating me on the United Nations rant. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. All your support, your kind wishes, best thoughts, thumbs ups, and everything. Thank you so much. 37 thumbs ups. You got to love that. Good trivia. Everyone's saying, I'm sunk on movies. Uh, Sheila, love this movies. I have terrible memories for movies. Says Linda Lou, Agnes, good trivia. Sheila, I, I, a lot I didn't know. Thank you, Bruce. Jeremy, that was fun. Lion, good quiz. Thanks, Linda Lou. Thanks, Bruce. Glenn, Edinburgh, thank you, Bruce. See you next time. Guys, have a pleasant evening. Uh, take it easy. Uh, I'm going to stay indoors. I'm not going out there. There's snow on. I'm not going out. Um, I'm going to have something to eat now and load a video. I'm going to post my video. If you get a chance to see it tonight, give it a thumbs up. Uh, help me out. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Wednesday. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here tomorrow Wednesday and uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, off to see your epic movie, says Sylvan. Uh, <laughs> stay warm, Sheila. Amy, thanks, Bruce. Have a good night. My movie will be posted within the next 30 to 40 minutes. Hang in there. I will get it up there. Thank you, one and all. Uh, have a great night. Eat cheese whiz, Sheila said. Yeah, baby. Eat that cheese whiz from Canada. It's the best. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, thank you. Snowing here, too, says BC. Thanks, Bruce, says Eric. Linda Lou, bye, TWB gang. Jeremy, no mac and cheese for me. Oh, my goodness. I think I'd like to have mac and cheese at Sylvan's house. I think it would be pretty darn tasty. Uh, among a few other things that Sylvan is famous for over there, fantastic. Thanks, all. Good night, one and all. Agnes, good night, TWC. Agnes, you take care. Bye for now, everybody.